What is it about woodworking that gives you the most joy? I want you to think about that for a second. Hi, I'm Steve, and this is Woodworking for Mere Mortals. This channel is focused on helping you get started in this fun hobby without a truckload of money or a shop space the size of a warehouse. Woodworking isn't free, but it's my mission to keep it affordable, especially if you're just starting out. Be sure to download my free guide to getting into woodworking for less than $1,000 at mytoollist.com. So I've conducted a number of surveys in the past couple of years that thousands of people have responded to when asked, what gives you the most joy from woodworking? A common response is the satisfaction of completing a project. Other common responses are, I enjoy the time to myself and I like to use my hands to create things. What I almost never hear is, buying things gives me the most joy. Sure, there are some people who simply love to acquire and collect tools, but for the most part, tools factor low on the woodworking enjoyment scale. I know you've probably heard people say, yeah, but having good quality tools makes your woodworking better and more enjoyable. This myth has to be something started by the tool companies, or maybe it's just a way that we kind of retroactively justify our expensive purchases. Look, I've never had expensive tools, and I've always loved woodworking. If you chase contentment based on things that you don't have or on what other people have, you will forever be unsatisfied. My current table saw is better than the little craftsman saw I used for years, but I don't enjoy my time in the shop any more now than I did in 2008. There are tons of saws now that are way better than mine, but dropping two grand on one probably won't make me a happier woodworker. Personally, spending money actually has the opposite effect on me. Of course, if you're a professional carpenter, high-end equipment makes sense, but as hobbyists, there are lots of things you can do without spending a dime that will add to your joy of being a woodworker and maybe even improve your life a little. Every time I even suggest this tip, a lot of people have a knee-jerk defensive reaction, but hear me out on this one. For some reason, a lot of woodworkers have this manic belief that tools are sacred. These are holy objects that are not to be shared with others. You've probably even seen these cutesy signs like this one all over the internet and in people's shops. Tool rules, don't touch them, don't borrow them, don't move them, don't even look at them. <sighs> Frankly, I can think of very few sentiments crankier and less inclusive than that. Why not just get a lock and make your shop off limits to everyone if you're so worried about sharing your toys? For years, I've been proposing a paradigm shift with a better sign that puts friendships ahead of material things. Touch them, borrow them, move them, please look at them. Look, friends and neighbors ask to borrow tools because they need to fix something or they just need to do something themselves. They don't do it to make you grumpy and ruin your day. But your simple act of kindness will make you a hero and make another human's day. I think we need more of this in the world. In other words, Wheaton's Law. Think about it, if a friend asks to borrow other things in your world, do you also refuse? A cup of sugar, a rake, a flashlight? How about jumper cables, your car? And yes, I've heard all the arguments against lending tools. I once let someone borrow my circular saw and I never got it back. Well, try again. Don't define your worldview based on a single person or incident. Most people who borrow tools will return them in a timely manner. If someone doesn't, hey, maybe just ask for it back. They probably just forgot and they probably kind of feel terrible about it. If I lend someone a tool, I won't have it when I need it. I guess if you're working in your shop 24 seven and it's a tool that you use a lot, this might be an issue. But again, you're probably thinking about a worst case scenario. Ask for the tool back. Whenever I lend a tool, it comes back in worse condition or broken. Well, I doubt this happens whenever you lend a tool. In my experience, people usually return tools cleaned and in better condition, sometimes with new blades or sanding discs or whatever. Most people in the world are good. And there are other excuses like these that all share a common theme of fear. Fear of what might happen if we help someone out. And I know some of you are already typing out your one anecdotal story about some beloved tool that traumatized you for life, but 
try focusing on the good in people rather than those rare what ifs. It's kind of like how we want to define YouTube by the negative comments when easily 98% or more are positive. But if lending tools is something that you're working on, try lending your time instead. In many ways, it's even more satisfying. If a friend or neighbor asks for a tool, your expertise might actually be more valuable, but they may be afraid to ask. Take the time to help them with their project. Working on a common goal is always a great way to cement friendships. You could also lend your time in the shop. Show someone how to use a router table. Give your non-woodworker neighbor a quick rundown on how to use a random orbit sander. If somebody comes and asks to borrow a certain tool, try responding with something like this. Hey, uh, can I borrow your hammer and a couple of nails? Sure, what you got going on? Oh, I'm trying to fix that that wobbly railing on my front porch. Actually, it sounds like you might need a drill or screws or something stronger. Do you mind if I take a look at it with you? Trust me, I've encountered lots of situations like this, usually from people who aren't very handy to begin with and they don't want to impose on your time. But don't ask if they need help. They'll almost always say no. Ask how you can help. Not only will it be a great way to build a friendship, but you're helping to pass on your skills and knowledge. Another great way to lend your time is to volunteer at non nonprofit institutions. When Wyatt was in high school, I used to build stuff for his theater group. It was interesting to build props and things that I otherwise wouldn't make. They had a limited budget, so I got to think outside the box and come up with creative, inexpensive solutions. And of course, I got to build the stuff for free. And organizations like these are always so appreciative of your time and efforts, and they're never critical of your work. Try forcing yourself to make a few projects using nothing but the scraps that are already in your shop. First, it'll help you use up some of that excess material that you've been saving before you officially become a hoarder. And second, it challenges your creativity by forcing you to build within constraints. Maybe make some tiny boxes or picture frames or drink coasters. Shop jigs are great scrap wood projects. How about some keychains or signs? And if you can't think of anything, just make an art piece. I made this mosaic, not really sure which way it goes, just by cutting down scraps of different wood species and fitting them all together. Even after making those few scrap projects, you may be left with way more wood than you actually need. I like to make a yearly shop purge and get rid of stuff that I haven't used and realistically won't use for anything. Clearing out the clutter can go a long way in making your time in the shop more productive. If you know an organization that could use it, donate it. If you have any neighbors with kids, ask them if they want any of it. When the kids in my neighborhood were little, they loved taking scrap wood off my hands. It was surprising to see the things that they would build or just kind of experiment with. And of course, Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace is a great way to pass on some excess lumber. I like to put an ad on the free stuff section of Craigslist and set my scrap lumber out on the curb. It's usually gone in a couple of hours. A tidy shop is so much more enjoyable to work in than a messy one. If you're between projects, spend an afternoon cleaning up the place, put away tools, sweep up sawdust that accumulates in those hard to get corners, oil your tools, wash the windows. I'm really bad about cleaning up during a project, especially for some reason drill bits and drivers. I have no idea why, but my brain refuses to put these back while I'm still working on a project. And the same goes for sanding discs. I seem to have this weird pathological reluctance to throw them away, even though they're probably well beyond their useful life. This is actually one of my favorite parts about my workshop. I find that nothing centers me more than being in my shop early in the morning when the sun splashes through the window. It's a quiet, reflective time that's great for planning out my day. A workshop is an ever-evolving space. Spend some time just moving things around and experiment with how your workflow might be improved by putting tools in different spots or rearranging your workbenches. One of the big discoveries for me years ago was how beneficial it is to move a workbenches out away from the wall so I can walk all the way around them. Believe it or not, there are amazing things you can do away from the internet, and woodworking inspiration is all around us. Here's some ideas. Go to an antique store or even a thrift store and look at all the furniture. Look closely at how those things were built and constructed. 
You might not want to replicate any of it exactly, but take lots of pictures of those things that you like and bring those features into your own projects. Keep an idea file on your computer, or what I do is I just keep an idea folder on Google Photos. Go to Ikea. I know, I know, it's cheap knockdown furniture, but a lot of their designs are pretty cool and can easily be replicated with actual wood and actual workmanship. Again, just borrow the elements that you like. When's the last time you went to a library? Surprisingly, these are really popular these days. Check out the woodworking section, of course, but also the design and art sections. Borrow a bunch of books and take pictures of all of the stuff that you like. Visit an art gallery or museum. Art galleries are usually free. You might have to pay for the museum, but they are a wealth of inspiration. Just be careful though, most museums don't want you taking pictures inside. Take the time to get out of your house and observe the world around you. It's an amazing place filled with ideas and inspiration, even motivated. Let me know what brings you the most joy from woodworking. Leave a comment below and thanks for watching.